Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to my Friday Facebook Live. I'm Dorsey Pruder, the CEO and founder of the Conscious Co-Parenting Institute and the host of the Alliance to Solve Parental Alienation Facebook Live every Friday. This Friday, today, we're going to talk about grief and unprocessed grief response to being alienated from your children. And so I'm gonna talk about grief from your perspective and I'll probably talk a little bit about grief from your child's perspective as well. And one of the things I think people don't realize is that the hurt and the anger and the protest response from a child is an unprocessed grief response. And Dr. Childress talks a lot about this, but I'm gonna talk about it to you, with you guys today on what is it? What are the stages of grief? You might already know what those are, but I'm gonna talk about them in the context of alienation and the emotional cutoff you're experiencing with your children and then what to do about it. So I'm gonna give you some easy to implement steps that you can start taking right away to start processing and um, moving through the stages of grief, identifying where you are in your grief response, and then also be thinking about where your children or your child, your alienated child might be as well. So um, I am on StreamYard coming to you live with StreamYard. So if you want to ask questions and I can identify you, you know, log in through StreamYard so I can see you. Um, you can also ask questions or post in the comment and I can read that as well um, as we're going through this. So I'm gonna try and power through. <clears throat> the the grief response or the unprocessed grief response that you're experiencing from your alienation situation with your children. So welcome, welcome. I'm glad to see people popping in and let's go ahead and get started. I've got a lot of ground to cover. So today we're going to cover what grief is in the context of this complex trauma surrounding your divorce and then understanding the primary and secondary losses that we have in with regards to grief around losing a relationship with a child or having it experiencing an emotional cutoff. I'm going to talk about the five stages, the facts about grief. We're going to talk about 13 different ways to lessen the grief response so that you can move through it. And then when you need to really seek professional help. So because this is the Alliance to Solve Parental Alienation and we see people at varying different le levels or stages of their grief as they're going through this complex trauma, I want to make sure that if you as people in this group supporting others um, see somebody, you know when it's time to maybe give them a little push in helping um, them seek outside help for um, professional help for their grief. And then also for you, you might self-identify there. And then how to really help others in this group or other groups you might be in um, process through their grief. So with that being said, let's get started. Let me just make sure my chat is open so I can see it. And um, let's jump in. So the first thing is what is grief? So grief, a lot of us know, it really encompasses a range of unpleasant emotions that really occur after a loss. So it could be the loss of a loved one, the loss of a marriage, the loss of um, uh, a pet, right, unemployment employment, divorce, um, separation, and what in the context that we'll talk about today, the loss of a relationship with a beloved child. So alienation, right? Grief surrounding the complex trauma of being alienated from your child after a divorce or separation. And the process of grieving, it really can't be completely controlled. So the process can take, you know, months, it could take years. Fortunately, though, the pain tends to lessen over time and as your life adapts to your new circumstances. So loss and grief are inevitable. inevitable. It's really part of um, life to suffer a loss from time to time. And um, grief can occur at any stage with regards to anything that we identify as a loss. So again, a job, a loved one, a relationship, a temporary uh, breach in a relationship, all of those things bring up emotionally painful parts of our life. And so when we understand grief, we can understand, okay, this is what's happening. This is how I'm responding to this, or this is how my child is responding to this. Now, what do we do about it? 
So let's talk a little bit about understanding the primary grief and then the secondary. So there's primary losses and then there's secondary losses that sometimes compound or pile up as you're experiencing grief. So loss and life can be like a, you know, um, like dominoes, right? You spend years arranging your life using your time and your money and your resources. And maybe after many years of this visualizing a perfect marriage and the perfect family and what your life is going to be like in this seemingly perfect situation. And maybe even the most stable situations can unravel quickly, right? Sometimes a spouse cheats or they just leave or the relationship just ends. And so you're grieving the loss of the dream, right? Of what you believed your life was going to be like as a married couple or as a family. So the primary loss could be the the loss of the relationship, right? The loss of the the, the dream or the vision that you had for your life. And then um, a significant loss can be similar to knocking over just one single domino. And then there's a chain reaction that occurs, right? That results in many other losses. So the loss of the relationship can lead to maybe the loss of a job or income, part of an income. It can lead to the loss of your home maybe cars, um, college tuition for kids, financial and emotional support. So one loss can quickly lead to additional losses in divorce. And now as that's piling up on you, now you throw a monkey wrench in it and you start to lose a relationship with a child or all of your children. So now you're dealing with the loss of the relationship, all of these other losses, the dream of what you wanted in your relationship. And now there is a emotional cutoff with your children. And life can be destabilizing when we're experiencing a primary loss and then the, all of the secondary losses. And so alienation frequently occurs in the spiraling effect of the compounding of all of the little micro losses, if you will, from the macro down. And some of those secondary losses can make it feel like you're losing literally everything and add to your grief from your primary loss. And um, hi, hello, whoever's saying hi, I can't see you because you're not in StreamYard, but hello. And um, <clears throat> I am live. So hopefully you are live too and divorced children. Yes. So um, there are losses and then there's the secondary losses and then they keep compounding and then all of a sudden everything is spiraling out of control and you don't have your children. And, you know, we get so mired in our story, right, of what's going on or the loss of everything, as somebody's commenting here, that we feel like there's nothing else we can do. And we don't even realize that we're processing through this grief, right? That we're just spiraling and spiraling and spiraling and we're sitting at the bottom and we don't realize that there is a way to climb out, that we just didn't see that there was a ladder. And oftentimes we don't even realize that we're grieving because we're in the process of what's happening and it's so overwhelming and it feels like, um, it feels hopeless and disconnected and um, um, insurmountable. And so I want to talk about the stages of grief that you may or may not know. And mo the most common um, really model of understanding the stages of grief is the Kubler-Ross model. And I want to talk about it with regards to the context of this family dynamic and what to do. So not all grievers experience the same emotions and not everybody loses everything. And, you know, all these situations are different. However, it's important to understand where you are in the grieving process so you can catch yourself and then also learn some of these skills to pull things together. It's, it's, um, it's never the end, right? So even if you're feeling like you're sitting in the bottom of the well. So the first stage, according to the Kubler-Ross, um, is the shock and denial. And it's really the first stage of grief is to consider that this is the basic survival response. So rather than feeling miserable, it's common to feel completely numb, completely confused, and 
oftentimes um, that there's nobody there for you. So denial is a way of holding the most challenging emotions at arm's length and really dealing with them at a manageable pace. And so there's only so much a person can take and denial is one way for us to soften the blow while we deal with the initial stage of the loss. Maybe it's the loss of the relationship. Maybe it's the loss of everything. Um, as one of you, uh, as you're commenting here, the loss of everything, right? That nobody cared and you're angry and, and you feel triggered and um, all of these things and the lawyers, nobody cares. So anger, good pointing out, is the second level of, um, of grief. So Oftentimes, once we get through the denial of, you know, I've lost everything and now my children hate me or that's what you believe, then it's common to feel anger towards everybody, the kids, your ex, the lawyers, the system, the mental health providers who don't get it, um, the universe, God, you know, your loved ones, right? Anyone else in your life, anger has absolutely no limits. So when we get to the, the stage of anger, it's really easy to feel anger towards everyone, including the person that um, took your children, right? Including the entire system, your lawyer, the judge, the mental health providers who seem to just keep missing all the signs of the pathology and what's going on. So it's really easy to feel that anger. And then as we start to emerge out of anger in our grief response, we start to bargain. and. This really becomes obvious when um, <clears throat> when that anger isn't going to return you to the life that you once had. And it's natural to start the bargaining phase, right? And um, it's the phase of uh, where we start to ask, what if, right? What if I did this differently? What if I stayed? What if this happened? What if I said this differently? What if, what if, what if, what if, right? We start to what if, and we use this as a tool during the bargaining process and our grief responses, we start to um, you know, emerge out of it. Bargain false allegations, exactly. Then we start to feel guilty, right? Um, that's very common in the bargaining stage. Um, you know, uh, I, that's great. I left my children, right? This is where we start to that spinning in stage three. So we're starting to like lift up out of it. We're not completely in survival mode. We're, we're past the pissed off stage um, of just complete utter anger all the time. And now we're bargaining. What if? And, um, and then oftentimes depression, right? will start to kick in and this is stage four. And, um, this is the stage where grief really starts to hit home for you and you start to feel um, empty and you notice the loss on your day to day level. And at this stage, it feels as if you'll never get to the end, right? That that there's no light at the end of the tunnel. You, you've you just simply facing the wall of the tunnel, don't even realize you're in a tunnel, it feels like a cave. And depression really is felt during this process or the grieving process. It's typically not a form of mental illness. So a lot of people get misdiagnosed with a mental illness at this phase in the divorcing process or in the grieving process when they're losing things. And um, uh, he served me divorce and gets temporary custody. Um, this kind of in a thread, I, I'm kind of looking as you're popping in here and um, depression in this phase. So where I'm talking about depression in the phases of grief is not necessarily a mental illness. Okay. So their depression is a mental illness. And um, when it's diagnosed as that, but oftentimes as we're grieving the loss of all of the different phases or the primary and the secondary losses in the divorce process, isn't necessarily a grief. I mean, I'm sorry, a mental illness. It's a a response to the grief that you're experiencing out of the loss. So yes, Depression can be a mental illness and no, as you're scaling through the five stages of grief, it's not a mental illness. You can move past it. And then you move to the fifth level of grief, with it, which is the um, acceptance. Um, acceptance is not the same as feeling like your old self, right? Access, acceptance really consists of full awareness that you've suffered a loss and 
your child is over here, the loss, the relationship is over. Maybe you've lost everything um, financially and all of those things. So you've got the um, experience of the loss. Um, but your life is in the present when you're at acceptance and it's possible to build new relationships and connections in the future. It's possible to move to the space of reuniting with your children. It's really hard to reunite when you're suffering in the grief responses at the um, denial, right? The shock and denial stage, in the anger stage, in the bargaining stage, um, and in the depression stage, the place of which you really start to open the door and start to pivot in the tunnel, if you will, and see that there's a light at the end of the tunnel is in the acceptance stage, the, the stage that the marriage is over, right? The, I lost all of these things, but I can build, right? This, the, these stages aren't really, um, uh, in that order per se, some people ping pong back and forth. But when you move to the space of acceptance, you move out of a lot of the, the fear and anxiety and shame that comes with the other stages of grief. And it's important to understand that gaining additional knowledge about grief and understanding it in this family dynamic allows you to move into the next level of really shifting out of the, the grief and into the space of connection and reconnection with your family, with your children. Um, is it common to go backwards in the steps? Yes. Um, no one cared that that's how you feel when you're in the grief response. Totally. Ther therapists never help. A lot of therapists don't even understand the process of what's happening around complex divorce and what's happening in this grief response. They're completely clueless um, from grief to say anger from grief to say anger. Anger is a second step or a second level of grief. So when you're feeling anger, that is a process of grief. So we deal with alienated kids a lot and they show up angry, rejecting, and they're mad at you um, as the targeted parent or the chosen parent. They, they are processing anger. It's an unprocessed grief response. So if you follow Dr. Childress, he talks about that a lot. Um, Ooh, I lost my daughter in a car accident. Yeah. So people who are grieving the loss, I'm sorry to hear that the loss of a child you know, into death, right? There's, there's no, um, um, there's no, there's no getting that child back, right? So you're going to go through and probably are going through the grief response. And so hopefully this resonates with you at the five different stages of grief. And we experience this too, with the alienation with a child who's still alive and, um, you're still angry. So like I said at the beginning of the of the the live sometimes it takes years you know you you grieve and you're stuck you're stuck at the different stages I'm going to talk a little bit about um the complexities of grief and then how to start moving through some of these these things so that you can move to living your life again um so the grief response is complex the only path out of grief travels right through the middle of it Okay, so you can't avoid it since grief is painful. The obvious response is to avoid it at all costs, but grief can't ever be avoided permanently. It will wait for you until you're ready to face it. So for the person here who is who's typing quickly, yes, you know, you're you're moving through it and you're still in the anger phase. And you'll be there until you're ready to move through to the next phase or you seek help from somebody who actually understands grief and complex trauma to help you move through it. Um, overcoming grief is work. Successfully managing grief is more like um, uh, biding your time until it passes. Grief is hard. It's both physically and psychologically hard. And there are reasons why you feel exhausted after a significant loss. You feel out of control. Um, if you've physically lost a child to death, there's nothing, you, you know, you can't fix it. So you're going to go through the what if stage. Um, if you physically lost your child to alienation or both, right? Some, some people here, they've lost a relationship with their child to the complexities of alienation or, or an emotional cutoff after the divorce. And then, um, um, and then, 
and then the child dies. And, you know, there's this open gaping wound, this complex trauma, this grief that um, people aren't helping you move through. So when you're own, when you're doing this work, um, and as I walk you through this lesson today, you know, be good to yourself. Physically, that means eating well, get sleep, exercise, the basic stuff, and then emotionally be kind and patient with yourself. And for those of you that have been in this on this journey for a long time, maybe years and decades, you know, um, it's hard until it isn't. And then it is easy, but until it's easy, it's really hard. And um, so be graceful with yourself. And grieving is a normal process, okay? It's a normal process. You're grieving. And for those of you that have children that are still alive, you're grieving the loss of a child that you can't reach yet. Your child is grieving. They're grieving the loss of you, their normal range parent that they can't reach yet. Okay, that there's the bond hasn't been resurfaced. It's never broken. It's tucked below the surface, but you're struggling right now with the with the grief. Both of you are grieving. And if you're still in anger, but your child is probably in anger too. So wherever you are in the grieving process, be easy on yourself and it is a normal process. So you're on this journey. We're here in the Alliance to Solve Parental Alienation. We're here to support you and help you move through these stages. I just thought it was important on this, this um, Friday to share. I was thinking about this and some of the messages I've had from, from parents. And um, I've really thought about like, you know, the misunderstanding of grief and how um, the mental health community has not really picked this up. And especially with you, the, the, the left behind parent and how to actually solve that or help you move through that. So you can create that soft place for your beloved child to fold back in and land. So, um, uh, let's see, I was lucky, blessed that I have my girls and the last few years of her life. Yay. August 99, was till now. Oh, August of 1999. I was like, wait, that doesn't make sense. Got it. A social worker laughs at you. They laugh at me all the time. So um, my daughter is angry, all because my girls came and lived with me. Her twin is alienated. That's tough. So you've got twins. So one is with the pathogenic parent and one is with you. And so moving through the, the complex trauma of grief, you know, through the stages of grief for even the child that's with you and for yourself will really open up that space for your other daughter to fold back in. Um, it's unfortunate that a lot of mental health providers, um, again, don't understand it. I hope that they're listening and they can pick up these tools that I'm sharing with you guys, or you can take it to, to a therapist or somebody you're working with. I would seek somebody who understands grief, somebody who understands complex trauma surrounding divorce, attachment systems, personality disorders, disorders. And um, I mean, those are the things that we're dealing with here. And it's important to make sure that you surround yourself with people that are supportive. And if you're in a relationship with a mental health provider, you know, you're seeing somebody and they're not really getting and they're not moving you forward, it's okay to find somebody else. So grief can take longer than some expect it to take. It's easy for an outsider to look in at a situation and determine that it should take a certain number of weeks or months to heal and, and they can be frustrated with you, but it can be a really long process. And the first few months can be especially challenging. And if, especially for, for, parents who don't understand what's happening. You're going through this divorce. You already have this complex, you know, divorce, the separation, this, this primary um, grief, right? This primary loss that you're grieving. And then maybe all, some of the secondary stuff, job or income or splitting assets and all of those things. And then next thing you know, your child stops seeing you and they start rejecting you and they start saying hateful things and you're just spiraling, right? And and you you hear the things, um, people saying things like, um, don't worry, divorce is hard on the kids. They'll come around or don't push them or um, and mental health providers are saying this. Give them time. Listen to the children. Um, all of these things are compiling, right? Compounding the grief that you are experiencing that nobody is helping you move through. And then depending on, you know, where you are in the process, this could be your first round of holidays, right? Christmas, birthdays, Thanksgiving, all the hol holidays that you don't have your kids. It, 
some of you have been in this for decades and you haven't had your children. We reunited a mom um, a while back who had 30 years of no contact with her children. And she was really holding on to um, the holiday, like the children being with her on the holiday. And I coached her directly and she was she had 30 years of grief and um, unresolved. And finally through some coaching, she was able to move through it. And she had her first holiday uh, with all of her children who swore they'd never spend a day with her on a holiday. And it was just, this mom's ability to shift her narrative, right? Shift her story, move through the stages of grief where she was stuck for so long on one stage and moving to the place of, well, why don't you just celebrate the holidays on any day but Christmas, right? And the acceptance of that for her and just shifting the energy around that created the space for her children to fold back in. And that was a couple of years ago and she still has a very strong bond with her kids. The bond is never broken. So no one else can determine how long your grief will require before healing takes place. So it takes however long it needs to take. And again, it's hard until it isn't, and then it's easy. So grief can't be predicted. So while there is an acceptable outline for griefing in the process of it, there's just many, many different variables. So no particular reason one day may be much more difficult than the other. So um, it is possible for one person to develop a clinical depression and anxiety, which then can become mental illness, while others avoid that condition altogether. So you might believe you've moved beyond your grief only to have it come up and come rushing back in sometimes decades later. So let me look at some of the um, comments here. Um, I'm married and I have a grandson. Congratulations. Two weeks ago, I did get married. Uh, that's another person. Congratulations. Same person. Congratulations. My son has cerebral policy. Palsy. Um, sorry to hear that. I know that could be really challenging. And that could also have brought on grief, especially when he was young and he found out and, and moving through that. I don't know where he is. Mm, that's tough. Um, um, we'll talk about how to find um, kids probably in another Facebook Live. Um, you don't deserve this. I, I agree. I need paperwork. Parents need to know parents are still, parents need to know parents are to still be adults. 22 years old. My son has a seven-year-old mind and he's 29. All of that is tough. Um, we deal with, with uh, family members that have, you know, kids that have learning disabilities and challenges and that are alienated. They're easy to alienate. And um, oftentimes kids get abducted. We recover kids that are abducted all the time and reunite them with their left behind parent. And what we've seen time and time and time again is that the bond is never broken. It just resurfaces once the child is, is recovered and protected. Um, so, all of these things that I'm talking to you about today is really an inner game for you about moving through the complexity of grief that comes along with an emotional cutoff or an abduction or the alienation of your children. And it can be a vacillating process. So grief is different from the flu, right? The negative feelings associated with the flu, they build and then gradually dissipate. Grief can come and go. Um, it could be, you could be, moving along, living your life, and something could trigger the grief and the negative feelings associated with that loss will come back. And then you're back in the initial shock of grief, and it can mask the physical and emotional pain. And your grief might even be greater after several months or years than it was at the time of the loss. So when grief returns after a period of reprieve, it can be really super frustrating. But over time, grief will return with less frequency and intensity. So, you know, if you understand it, half the time awareness really brings you to a place of acceptance. And it's not possible to heal from grief alone. Withdrawing from others after the loss of a relationship, like the marital relationship and then the loss of your children is a natural response. So while grieving, it's very personal process for everybody. We all grieve a little bit differently and keeping it to yourself is a mistake. So other people often will follow suit and they believe the best course of action is to just leave you alone. And in many cases, others don't know what to say and how to help and we're gonna talk about that in a minute. So this is one reasons, one of the reasons that professional help can really be valuable if you get the right 
kind of therapist so or coach, somebody who understands the complex trauma around the emotional cutoff of a child and a parent. So um, you might not have another effective option for communicating about your grief, but other with somebody other than with somebody you don't know or a coach or somebody that you can build trust with a therapist. And there are many, many support groups that really are led by um, sometimes other parents, um, sometimes experts like this group. You know, I, I am a reunification specialist. That's what I do. And um, I'm also a formerly alienated child. So I understand the complex uh, grief response from your child's perspective. And, and I'm also a parent and I understand the complexity of the grief response as a parent. I'm a step parent. And um, so I understand this process and how grief shows up in our life. And sometimes the support of other people, like in this group where you're supporting each other and you have similar stories can help you share and get some of that stuff out so that you can move through the stages of the grief. And knowing these facts about grief, really they're, help, they're to help you really better position yourself with how to deal with your grief and to help others deal with their challenges. And the grieving process takes time. And again, it can't be predicted 100% of the time. So just be patient with yourself and be patient with others here in the group. So if you haven't noticed, we've shifted some stuff in our alliance group so um, that we are holding this sacred container for solution for you. So we are monitoring the posts that are coming into the group. We're allowing people to ask questions and sharing so that you guys can support each other, but we're really keeping an eye on everything. So we're not just letting it just be an information dump of a bunch of noise. We really want to focus and help you resolve this dynamic in your family and move your family forward. Um, all right. Uh, when my son seen me, he said, I love you, mom. I was kneeling at my daughter's casket uh, with my son. When my ex and his sister says, what are you talking to him about? I said, how much we all love him and with much his sister loves him. That was the last we ever talked. That's so sad. And um, I'm really sorry to hear that. And, and I really hope that you get support here. And I hope this lesson is resonating with you. And um, I really hope that you, you, each other, that the other people listening and the other people reading this poster's comment, you know, hold this space sacred for, um, for, connection for unconditional love for acceptance and understanding as you're moving through this process um and then you said i didn't know the difference my child is alienated um from the twins right so you've experienced the loss of a child through death and the loss of a child through alienation and um you know, it's, but the grief response is the same, right? So grief is the same. You go through the stages, it just shows up a little bit differently. So I'm going to go through some ways to lessen the grief. So while it can take time to get over the negative feelings of grief, there are things that you can do to make the time pass more easily. So be assertive and do what you can to manage your grief. And um, no, no, list of tips that I give you or um, suggestions will take the grief away, but the, it may make the process a little easier for you. So think about these as you're moving through a grief response and understanding that the anger or wherever you are in the process, that, that it is a process and identify where you are and know that there is a light at the end of the tunnel. And one of the things is to find other people that have a similar experience, right? So grief is such a universal process and it's easy to find others. This group has almost 17,000 members going through something similar as you. And so really anchor into this group. One of the things that sets us apart from a lot of other groups is we're focused on the solution. We're providing things like this for you that you can implement right now implement right away. And so really anchor into the solution in your local community. See if you can find a local support group, any local, um, uh, 
maybe support groups on Facebook. You can connect in to see if they have any live Facebook or live support groups. And be careful that you're not spending time spinning in the problem, that you're spin spending time with people holding a container to help you move forward, even if it's just one baby step to move forward. And if you're a private person considering these online groups, right? And, and you can remain anonymous. You can post questions in our group anonymously. Um, write a letter to your child so or your loved one right the the there are things that I know you've left unsaid and we all have things that we want to say to our kids that we haven't been able to say. It's an opportunity to say what needs to be said, write a letter to your alienated child from wherever you are in the stage of grief, don't send it. So if you're in the anger stage, write whatever you need to say, get it all out, then fold it up and burn it, get rid of it, get it out of your physical body so that you can get rid of it. Um, these are things that you probably shouldn't say and but feel like you need to say as you're just holding them inside of you. So write a letter, get it out and then get rid of it because there's nothing worse than writing a letter and having your child find it. So make sure that when you're doing that process that you get rid of it, the goal is to get it out of you. Avoid using drugs and alcohol, food, sex, anything to numb out your pain, creating another challenge on top of the one that you're already facing doesn't make a lot of sense. And I know a lot of people do this. So avoid creating further difficulties for yourself. The last thing you need is to gain 50 pounds, right? Or develop a drug addiction or have drinking be used against you in, in family court. I see it all the time. So deal with your grief intelligently. Seek the support that you need make your health a priority. It's not unusual for someone in the grief process to ignore their basic hygiene. They eat poorly, um, they stay up late, they avoid exercise, um, all of the things that come with not living a healthy lifestyle. So grief, it's easier to manage if you are at your physical best. So take care of yourself, see a physician when necessary, but it's easier to move forward in your life if you're living a healthy life. And then resume your normal life, returning to your normal routines. That will really help keep your mind busy and show your alienated child that you are living a happy, healthy life. Your alienated child, they don't want to do what they're doing and they don't understand it. And um, they, if they see you crumbling, then that is not good for them. They need to know that you're okay. And so being okay as quickly as possible is important. So take the time you need, but get back to work, You know, um, find a support system, get involved in church if that's your thing, maybe join a softball or a volleyball or some sort of um, sport, but you can interact with other people, um, connect with people and live a life, right? Because when your child folds back in, they need to know that you're okay and that there's a safe, happy place for them to fold back into. Um, I always tell people, you know, volunteer for stuff, providing assistance to other families um, that are experiencing this, other parents here in the group, you know, really helps you deal with this complex grief that you have around the emotional cutoff you have with your kids right now. So it also demonstrates that you are valuable to the world. And we often forget this and we spin in our own head trash. And so when we get out and help other people, if you help enough other people get what they want, you get what you want automatically. And it's one of the reasons that we do this work, right? Helping a lot of people to help other people that helps us too, right? That helps me as an adult alienated child um, process the grief response I have for being an alienating child, right? Being an alienated child and showing up how I did as a kid. Um, be patient, avoid getting frustrated with yourself and with other people and especially with your kids. Your friends mean well when they tell you to snap out of it or don't worry, the kids will come around, all that kind of stuff. You know, just be easy um, on yourself. Be patient and easy and graceful. Similarly, be gentle with yourself. It can take a long time to feel like your old self. So celebrate each little win, celebrate each little day, each little victory, small steps of significance will take you to the next place, right? So if you take enough of them, 
So just keep putting one step in front of the other, one foot in front of the other, and talk with your friends and family about what's going on. People that you can trust, people here in the group, be kind to each other, right? Be gracious with each other. If you see somebody is triggered and destabilized, don't keep pushing the button. Help them um, move forward or just maybe just listen. You don't have to convince people, especially in this group of what's going on. This We're in this together. So hold this sacred space together for each other to really move forward and hold um, the place of unconditional love. Practice what you should be doing with your children and creating that soft place for your child to land. Do that here in this Facebook group. Create the soft place for each other to land. Give each other the space to, to share without pointing fingers and patching, passing judgment. There's just no need for doing that. Help people move forward. And then find a hobby. You know, um, this may seem simple, but find something that you do or that you enjoy doing that brings you joy. Your child wants you to experience joy. Even if you don't feel like it, make yourself take part in something that brings you joy. Eventually you'll get back to your joyous self. So find a new hobby. If you don't have a hobby, find a new one. Find something that you can do maybe with your beloved if you're in a new relationship, with kids that you're in, in relationship with now, if you have some of your children, other people's children, spend time giving unconditional love to um, to, to kids, you know, maybe volunteer for um, at-risk youth, with at-risk youth. Do something that brings you joy. And then I would say travel if you can, getting out of town to renew your perspective of the world and really just getting to notice other people, getting out of your normal routine can really be helpful in providing a little relief from the grief. And then exert yourself physically, you know, go for a run, ride a bike, do something physical to kind of get the juices flowing and get some of the toxins out. Um, I'd like to plant, I, uh, you know, I don't have a big yard, but I have a lot of plants. <laughs> the more complex the activity, the less time you'll be spending focusing on the loss and the what ifs and the misery that comes with this family dynamic and this unprocessed grief. So your natural tendency during periods of loss, loss is to really sit at home, to brood, to think about the what ifs. So get out of your house, move your body, get into a different environment and turn to religion if you're a religious person or seek a new one or seek comfort in um, spirituality or some way that you can connect with people who are connecting, right? Who want to hold that sacred space of unconditional love for you. Um <clears throat> As the spouse, how do we manage the fact that our spouse is so lost? That's a great question. So you can provide, sorry, I've got to put my foot down. It's falling asleep in my chair. Um, provide the container of understanding, hold the space, help encourage them to get out of the house, or um, but don't pressure, right? Be easy with them and provide grace, right? Uh, a container of grace. I'm going to talk a little bit about if it moves to the depression, what to do so that you can support. Um, and then when they might also need um, professional help. So again, grieving is a process. It can be long or it can be slow. Um, it can be fast. Wherever they are in the journey, make it easier for them. So when you help with the situation by holding that sacred container of no judgment and unconditional love and encouragement, you can help them move forward. Um, <clears throat> let's see, much guilt if I ever get upset over the loss or mad that he is so distant. Yeah, guilt is a um, is one of the most destabilizing manifestations of fear and comes up in the in the grief too. So um, process, I say if you're feeling guilty, write it down. You know, what are you feeling guilty about? You're probably in the what if stage of grief. That's where the guilt really shows up right? What if I did this? I didn't do that. I abandoned that. all of that noise. That's the stage three, really, of the grief response. So if you're there, um, maybe it would be helpful to write it down, right? Get it out of your physical body and out of your head. Like, what? where are you? And then um, find something else to do so that you can move through the process. But again, it takes as long as it takes. And then whoever is in your life, beloved, um, uh, 
being graceful with them too, especially if they're trying to help bring joy into your life. Joy got expensive. <laughs> On a lighter note, true. <laughs> so funny. So for those of you, and I know a lot of people in this group really suffer with, um, they're, they're stuck in some of the phases of this grief where um, maybe they're, you're really stuck in the depression stage and everyone is different. And some of us really run faster than others and that's okay. And some of us can juggle three balls at one time or 10. And some of us can deal with grief effectively in the absence of professional help. While others just need a little bit more assistance, it's okay. Wherever you are, it doesn't matter, it's okay. Consider seeking professional help if you are neglecting your personal hygiene. It's a common sign in both grieving and various types of mental illness. It's easy to forget or to convince yourself that it doesn't matter, right? So it's often the first sign that more help may be needed. So if you're not brushing your teeth every day, if you're not changing your clothes, you're not showering, if you're not taking care of yourself, that's pretty a pretty good first indicator. Or you have the inability to enjoy your life. It's common to be unhappy for a while, but enjoyable activities should be enjoyable again. So if you're unable to find any enjoyable activity after grieving for a few months, consider contacting a professional. Again, seek somebody who understands grief, who understands complex trauma, especially surrounding divorce, who understands emotional cutoffs, the complexities of losing a relationship with the child, okay? Any thoughts of harming yourself in any way, you're important. You don't deserve to be harmed in any way by anyone, including yourself. So it's critical to seek help if you keep feeling this way. So for those of you who are here that we see this in this group and we see people posting these things, one, let me just give you a shout out. Thank you so much for those of you that really jump in and support the other parents who are really struggling and holding that space and offering your phone number and, you know, a, a, um, message or however you're connecting with them to keep them moving forward. We've had some really scary situations in this group where we've called the local police and, and they've gotten there in the nick of time. So we, we are here. We love you. And um, you deserve to be happy and healthy and whole. So if you are in these places, this mindset of wanting to harm yourself, then please reach out. And even if you're just posting here, we're gonna be all over it. Um, substance abuse, while um, some people think this is a great way to numb out, why would you wanna add an additional burden in your life? This is a sign that you're moving backward, not forward. And any negative thoughts or feelings that um, don't lessen over time. So after the initial grieving period, it's normal for your outlook on life to slowly start to improve and your emotions are stuck then it's time to find help. And so keep an eye out for those signs. So if someone else in your life is grieving, keep an eye out for them. So for, for the person asking, you know, what, what about the spouse? If you're the spouse, you should be keeping an eye out for those signs. It's not easy for someone to recognize that they need help themselves. So you might give them that list of stuff and, and say, you know, the, I'm starting to see these signs or I'm, I'm paying attention. Um, Grief starts to become indulgent and it doesn't serve anyone and it's painful. So if you transform it into remembrance, then you're magnifying the person that you lost and also giving something to that person, to the other person, of that person to the other person. So they need, they can experience something positive energetically from you. So the more you focus on what it is that you want in the relationship with your child or the positive that you can focus on, you can start energetically pushing this out into the universe, right, to your, your beloved child. And so for the other people in this group that are supporting people that are um, maybe a step parent, um, a professional, a friend, a parent, a grandparent, uh, we have a lot of grandparents here. Grief is universal experience. So sooner or later, a friend or a loved one will face this grieving situation. You are all here because you're either a parent facing it or you're here to support other people that are facing it. You don't know what to do. You wanna help them solve it. I would say, over half the people that call Conscious Co-Parenting Institute are a loved one wanting to help their beloved, their child, their adult child who's being alienated, um, their spouse who's being alienated. They reach out to want to help. And 
So it's important to just kind of close today's Facebook Live with um, what are some of the things that you can do, especially in these difficult situations where your beloved is grieving the loss of a child who's still here that they can't connect with, they haven't been able to rebond with. And it can be uncomfortable to reach out to someone in need, but your support for them is critical and it's okay if you don't have the perfect words at hand provide your support in a helpful manner and be understanding. So there's a difference between empathy and sympathy, right? Empathy is meeting them where they are without trying to fix it. So you wanna keep the line of communication open Okay, those that are grieving the loss of their child, because that's mostly who's here, although we do have some alienated kids here too, um, they're gonna grieve on their own schedule. So some prefer to be alone for a little while, while others might prefer to talk about it. So others have conversations right away. Sometimes it takes them a little bit of time, but be there for your loved one, hold that space. When they're ready to talk, listen, okay? Let the other person know that you're available, That you're ready to listen whenever they need you um, without being pushy, right? Or intrusive. And again, focus on being a good listener. It's not much that you can say to help, but you can provide relief by listening. Unless you have a strategy that you know works, something that you can say, you know, when I did this, this helped, um, or this kicked the door open, just listen. Offer assistance when you have assistance um, to offer that you know works. Um, send a, a loving note or give them loving messages every day, letting them know that you love them and that you're there for them and you're willing to listen whenever they need you. And um, help them to find the support that they need. So if they need a grief counselor, if they need a um, trauma therapist, help them find somebody with their permission, okay? There's nothing wrong with getting expert assistance. Um, a lot of people will uh, give our classes as gifts to their beloved saying, you know, I found this class, this is really great. Those kinds of things are helpful when they're ready. They're not helpful if you're just trying to convince them to do something. Um, you know, what do they say? Um, food is the way to the, to the heart, you know, make them meals, um, ways that you can share um, and ease this anxiety that they're having as they're moving through the, the grief of, of what's going on in their family right now. And, and, and just be helpful, right? So if you're married um, and you see that your, your beloved is struggling with the, the pathology in the family or the loss of their child, or they're just feeling not what to do, help out, you know, with little tasks, the daily tasks, just holding that space there so that they know that you're, you're, you're loving them. You're creating that happy, healthy space for them. And, um, that it's an us container that when one person spins in the us container, only one person spins. If you get in the spin zone with them, then everybody's spinning and, and, um, you're feeding into the, uh, um, unmanaged emotions. So, so, let them know it's okay and just keep things moving forward. And um, again, get them out of the house, even if it's just to sit on the porch or take a walk around the block, just helping them when they're in that just spinny grief space so that they can um, move their life forward. And speak carefully. So consider what you'd like to hear if you were in a similar situation. And most experts agree that saying things that minimize the loss is a mistake. And so this is where the sympathy, no empathetic response starts with at least, right? So um, uh, that's sympathy and empathy never starts with at least. So at least um, your your child is um, with the other parent, right? That doesn't make you feel good, right? So as you're supporting people like this, be very careful um, in the words that you're using and mindful of the things that you're saying to each other in this group and also outside of the group. Um, keep in mind that um, 
people that are moving through the beginning uh, part of alienation. So people that are here that are just freshly alienated. There's a lot of people. Um, a lot of the people that have answered the, the question coming into this group, they're fresh into this process and are just discovering. You know, it's especially difficult in the very beginning because it's raw and it's confusing and they don't understand. And then some of you people that have been here, parents that have been here for a long time, it's hard there too because, um, you know, it seems hopeless. However, just remember that it's never too late to reunite with your child as long as they're alive and remind them that others love them. So for the the beloved parents here, it's important for us to hold this container for each other, to hold that space of knowing that that you're loved, that we love you, that we're here with you, that we support you, and that you support each other. And um, if you're in a relationship with an alienated parent, you know that they know that you love them and that you're holding that space. Don't create the competition, which we see a lot with step parents when the child starts to fold back in and they haven't been there for a long time. That sometimes creates a competition. Be mindful of the feelings that are coming up. Seeing someone you love in pain is challenging. While you cannot remove the pain, you can help. And it's difficult to walk that really fine line between being helpful and being a burden. So go slowly, but do what you can. Your loved ones and you are bonded. Your children, your bond with you and your children is never broken. And your child, they haven't forgotten you. Um, they are simply tucking the, the bond below the surface for safekeeping. They are also grieving and they feel alone. They can feel all the same stages, depression and anger, right? The fear of the loss of their beloved parent. It's common to feel guilt. The emotions are unpleasant and intense and we aren't faced with such strong emotions on a regular basis. So it makes dealing with them particularly challenging. So time may not be completely healing all wounds, but it does lessen the sting over time. Just remember that life is short. You are the parents. You all have a limited time on earth. We all do. Grief is important, so you need to grieve. Understand the stages of grief. Notice where you are in the stages of grief and move through them in your own time and just remember to honor the unbreakable bond between you and your beloved child. And if someone you know is experiencing grief, so if it's not you, but somebody you know, you're here as a professional or a support person, then be there for them, help them with the life's day-to-day -day chores and strive to be a really good listener. And you might be limited to offering your condolences, like, you know, because you don't know what to do, but just allow them to determine the pace. It's up to them. And it's up to you as the parent to, to understand where you are and what pace you grieve. And most importantly, seek professional help for yourself or for others if necessary. Um, one tragedy is enough and the bond is never broken at at any time as you move through this process you are the chosen parent we're going to talk a lot about that more a little bit later what that looks like and how to do that um and for those of you that may be noticing some of the changes in the alliance um we are getting ready to do a how to get your kids back um workshop starting july 26th so i wanted to share this grief lesson with you guys today to kind of get you moving in the right direction of processing the complex trauma, moving through the grief, understanding what stage of grief you're in, understanding what stage of grief other people in this group might be in and to not really get stuck in trying to fix everyone else or be competitive or combative with other people, but know that we've got some really cool stuff coming up in the next few weeks. Um, and we will be doing this live workshop, how to get your kids back. It's um, every day I'll be in this Facebook group. You've got to register for the class, but every day I'll be teaching a new lesson for you, the chosen parents, and really helping you solidify your unbreakable bond, resurfacing it, and reunite with your children. So as you go about the weekend, some things you can think about as you're dealing with grief in both the challenging and painful manifestation that it is, 
answer some of these questions and it might help you gain some better perspective of your situation and maybe get you through your grieving process. So the first thing is what secondary losses are you experiencing? What will change in your life and what can you do to mitigate those situations? So think about your primary um, loss and then are there some secondary losses that you're ex experiencing and what will change in your life and what can you do to mitigate those situations? And what are um, some of the things that comfort you? So how can you lessen your grief and how could others do or what could others do or how could others help you to assist you in moving through this? And do you need someone to talk to, right? Can you um, connect with somebody in the group? Can somebody just run a couple errands for you? Um, who can you reach out to to really help with some of these tasks to help move you forward? Um, can you start a new hobby? Is there something that you can start focusing on, something more joyous that brings more joy into your life? And if a loved one is grieving, what can you do to help them? Write these things down. So wherever you are, if you're the grieving parent or you're one of the loved ones helping and supporting that person, and do you or the loved one need professional help in dealing with the grief? So where can you find help in your community? What are your support groups and can they help you? And can you reach out to your church or maybe through the hospital or local, you know, look up the local support groups or maybe a local support group here or maybe here in the Alliance? And what could you choose to be happy about your life right now? Your career, maybe you're remarried, maybe you have new children in your life, um, your friends, uh, your religion, your spirituality, maybe you have a new pet. Find some things that you can choose to be happy about in your life right now. Your kids wanna see you happy. And what are some of the activities you enjoy doing? What is one new hobby that you always wanted to try? What do you need to get started, right? Write these things down. Sometimes just refocusing from where you are and spinning in the grief to things you can do right now starts to click, right? Something starts to click and shift you out of that. And how will this process ultimately make you stronger that you can be the soft place for your beloved alienated children to land. So with that, I'm going to say thank you so much for listening and sharing an hour with me here in the Alliance to Solve Parental Alienation on your Friday afternoon. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. Um, peace in so you can have peace out. See you next week. Have a good one, guys.